Welcome back. It's Middays with Mark. Congressman Mark Pocan taking your calls here on the Tom Hartman Program, Tuesday edition. And uh, Tawny in uh, New York City, in, in New York, anyway. Uh, Tawny, you're on the air with Congressman Pocan. Yeah, I, I just wanted to ask why there, the right is able to pack our Supreme Court with all right wing uh, opinions. The FBI, they don't want them having any opinions. They're supposed to operate without being biased. Why isn't the Supreme Court held to the same standard? Well, Tony, uh, great question. It should be. The problem is it's where they're taking their pick. So uh, as Tom mentioned before, a couple of the major people that are being looked at, the fact that they belong to groups that have uh, adamantly fought against birth control and abortion rights uh, tells you a lot about that justice, and that's again, could be the problem they're going to have. You know, let's face it, Barack Obama appointed Merrick, uh, Merrick Garland a Republican to the court because he knew that there was a divided government he wanted to happen, and they held it up, and then here they are uh, with these outrageous uh, picks that are very uh, extreme, and uh, that's where the fight has to happen because of how they're trying to abuse the system. But I think we're getting used to Donald Trump abusing the system. Yeah, it seems. Freddie in Oaklawn, Illinois, you're on the air with Congressman Pocan. Uh, hi, Congressman. Yeah, um, my, um, I'm, I'm Hispanic. I'm Mexican-American. I'm retired. Um, and I, I have a question about the contributions. I have just heard this gentleman talking about the small contributions. Since I've been retired, I've been more political, but uh, I can't get out there in March because I got a, like a heart problem, things like that. But I do make contributions, and I make like these real small contributions, like to somebody like Randy Bryce and and Beto in Texas. Now, uh, can you tell me if if you know my little contributions, like uh, seven dollars or eight dollars, do they really see uh, some of that money? Because I know Act Blue and Move On, they take their little part, but does it really help? Absolutely. In fact, it helps in multiple ways. One, you have to fund the campaign, right, uh, whether it's to have people helping to get the word out through the grassroots or, you know, some of the advertising they do. It's essential for that. But more important, it's sending a message that the Democratic Party doesn't have to go to pharmaceutical companies and insurance companies and other big corporations to get their special interest money in order to fund campaigns. If we can fund campaigns on your $7 contributions, and your neighbors and tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands and maybe millions of people doing that, then we, don't, we can take back that grip that the special interests have on the political system. So what you're doing is the most democratic thing you could possibly do, um, and it really does help. And, um, you know, the other thing you could also do uh, is, uh, thanks to groups like Indivisible, you can make phone calls from your home if you're not able to do things, and you can make calls into Randy Bryce's district or into Beto's uh, state into Texas. So uh, something else you can do to help. It's that grassroots power that's going to supersede their advantage with money. Pat in LaPorte, Indiana, you are on the air with Congressman Pocan. Hello, Congressman. Um, I would like to speak with you quickly about gun control. It seems to me that we need some legislation that would treat guns just like we do automobiles. In other words, public liability and property damage. Um, if gun owners were required to register their weapons, that would be great. But I think they also need to have insurance so that when damage is done by that weapon, the victim has a recourse. Yeah, Pat, I, I think you bring up um, some great points. And, you know, we've been unable to have a meaningful conversation about guns the gun portion of gun violence in this country uh, because of the NRA. For too long, the NRA, if they said jump, uh, politicians, uh, mostly Republicans, but a few Democrats would uh, say, okay, how high, which direction, how fast, and they really called the shots. The Parkland uh, situation, I think, has been a, a catalyst in changing that. Uh, it is now that the NRA can be a negative against people because they're realizing the NRA is not about people. It's about uh, gun manufacturers who just want to sell more guns and don't care about any laws as long as they can sell more guns. Uh, but what you're bringing up are key issues that we have to be able to have a conversation with. So I am hopeful that we're at a point now where the NRA has less influence than it has had previously and we can have these conversations. 
but many of the issues that uh, you're talking about and other gun issues are at 85 plus percent support in the public. Uh, that should be a no-brainer to get those done. But so far, we've been fighting the the special interest influence of the NRA. But we may finally be at a point we can turn that back. Elizabeth in Lowell, Massachusetts. You're on the air with Congressman Pocan. Hello. Hi. Quick question, please. We only have two minutes till the end of the hour. Yes, I want to ask the congressman. I have been a regular donor, be it a small donor, to the Democratic Party. And I live in Massachusetts, a pretty progressive state. I have been heard nothing from Elizabeth Warren, nothing from Nikki Songus, nothing from Democrats about the lack of the fourth estate doing its job. Heard nothing. If you can't afford to subscribe to the New York Times, nobody knows what was done to get Kennedy to step down from the Supreme Court unless they read the New York Times. Yeah, that was an amazing article, wasn't it? Yes. So your question, Elizabeth? Uh, why aren't we railing about the fourth estate not doing its job, and why are congressmen getting paid to not do their jobs, not read the bills? They'll say, oh, I haven't thank, read thank that you, bill. Elizabeth. What have you been doing? Thank you. If Congressman? Yeah, Elizabeth, so I, I think to your first point, you know, this is uh, a common refrain I have is that I know there are plenty of people, including people like Elizabeth Warren, who are uh, talking about the attacks on the press and how uh, what you know this whole idea of um, alternative facts and fake news is done to make people not pay attention to what's really happening. The problem is the corporate media has to pick it up or you'll never hear about it. Now, luckily, you know Tom's program and many other uh, types of programs like this and in social media. We're able still to get that message out, but the real problem we face over and over is that corporate media and the 22 minutes they have during the news in order to sell detergent uh, don't pick up on these things. So uh, rest assured, Elizabeth, there are people talking about why it's so important to protect uh, you know, journalists and, and news. Uh, I'm a journalism major myself, uh, very important to me. It's just sometimes it's hard to hear that because people aren't covering uh, what we're saying. Congressman, thanks so much for being with us today. Uh, absolutely, Tom. Thank you. I really happy appreciate fourth, it. Everyone. Yeah, have a happy 4th of July. Uh